say top billing top billing I top billing sitting back thinking about different aspects of this game got me thinking about the trench work obviously both teams are very good in the trenches and they wouldn't be here if they weren't don't get it twisted a lot of people think that the game is won I'm outside with pretty targets and everything but it's all about that trench work man so I'm thinking about uh different ways and different aspects that they can be taken advantage of and, and um of course with the tactical adjustments segment here so i want to look at this cat right here kate levon chasing i, I like kate levon chasing let's check this out with kate levon right you see him bumped out right he was switched over they had him originally kind of at six technique then they kind of bump him out on the outside right but let's be real he's an outside linebacker so he has to work flat duty as well but he gets to play the run on the way to the quarterback and get to go against tight ends like this so if they can keep him matched up um, off of some of Clemson's tight ends, he could do some damage right here. So see him working off a tight end, see him kind of take an outside of approach, worrying about that. And he's got to worry about uh, the rocket sweep right here as well, potentially to C.D. Lamb. See him get the extension on there, right? This kid is very talented, no doubt about that. Been kind of up and down for me, right, throughout this season. But you know the talent is there. But you see him continuing to work his way up to the quarterback. Doesn't get a sack on a normal pass set. Right? And he's going against a tight end. You would think he would destroy a tight end like that. At least a cat like Chase Young normally would. Uh, he didn't do that against Clemson. But you see him continuing to work. Right? Spreads his herb ass on the grass like fertilizer. Pretty much shoves him out the way. Like, get out of there, young man. It's time for me to, to eat. You see him work his way to the quarterback. Right? So it's going to be. But what really made this? Obviously, it's the coverage. Got young Mo Hampton back here. It's kind of a combination coverage type. Right? See Mo, Mo Hampton, the safety. Rotate down, kind of a matchup zone. You have almost a pseudo spy here in Jacob Phillips. Really nowhere for Jalen Hurst to go. So he's able to continue to work like this and get that sack. But uh, good work there to start the game and really set the tone. Now, LSU will move K. Levon chasing around. He's usually working from his defense's left, but he will get the chance to match up with Tremaine Ankrum right here, right tackle in the Jackson Carmen, who I think is going to be an absolute superstar. Let's check out Carmen going against Chase Young right here on the quick set. All right. Hands extended. Hands on the inside. Always be there. Be first, right? So he's first. He beat Chase Young to the punch. Working with kind of a crossover steps. Keeping a, a decent base width, right? Got to keep a decent base width. Can't be too far out over your skis, first and foremost. Got to keep those hands extended. Uh, keep yourself shielded between you and the quarterback. Uh, doing a good job, man. Forcing them to run the arc way out there. And if you see right here, this was just your normal play action play, right? Almost looks like a split zone or some type of zone uh, read or something like that. But you can see everybody's in the pass set. So there's no run. There's no pass tag on the back of this run call. T. Higgins running a slant. Quick draw McGaw shooting in ping pings. Check it out. Ping ping. Right on the money. Let's get it. All right. Going into the Oklahoma game, I thought. Oklahoma could have some success on the ground just for the simple fact that Oklahoma is probably the dopest run outfit in the entire country. I got to give LSU a lot of credit for being able to kind of stifle its run game. And um, it started with great team defense. Now, working out of uh, an odd front, right? But you have Jacoby Stevens, the safety, walked up over the tight end, right? So you got him at a seven technique against 21 personnel. Who you have here? So you're going to have their famous. Tag, right? You got their tag pull, tag sweep, tackling guard going right there. But check this out. Look at the look at the inside work right here for Hoko. Tyler Shelvin doing work. But it really starts right here with Jacoby Stevens staying parallel to the line of scrimmage. And then you're getting a replace, right, by Grant Delpit as becoming the de facto Ed Setter. So he originally goes inside with the tight end here, but then he stays parallel to the line of scrimmage, takes on the pulling the pulling lineman, does a great job right there. There's nowhere to run. Everybody's helping out, right? Grant Delpit doing a great job of setting the edge right here. Uh, Patrick Queen in the gap, right? All gaps covered. Nasty run defense, flying to the ball. That's that old school LSU defense. Old school LSU defense, nothing but a ton of NFL players on this defense, man. Look at this. This is beautiful. Look at the personnel here, right? 
have Mar young Marcel Brooks here, true freshman, sophomore Damon Clark right here. But look at my boy Jacoby Stevens, man. Between Jacoby Stevens and Isaiah Simmons, man, you're going to see some complete freaks on the field with the type of versatility that these two guys can provide. But I right, check this out right here. All right. Once again, working with the tag. Where is there? Look, look. Jacoby Stevens, right? So this is super light personnel right here. Jacoby Stevens going against Creed Humphrey, perhaps the best center in all of college football. Working a two gap. Drives him back a little bit. How strong do you have to be to do this? He's two gapping, man. Working a multi gap approach. Kennedy Brooks can see it, but he can't get there. Why? You got a guy working off of a center, stacking the shed blocks, at, and he's a damn natural safety, right? Playing on the second and the third level. Straight freaks, man. I'm telling you. Got to love some of these concepts running out of Clemson when in the run game, right? Especially being able to get quick draw involved in the designer QB run game. You're going to fake the rocket toss right here to Travis Etienne, but he's going to be coming around on a counter. Going to have Braden Galloway come in and man on the line of scrimmage, but you're pulling the center right here. Sean Pollard, he's getting the first thing smoking. This is dope. Fake the rocket toss, draws up edge defender and the overhang defender. Come lead it around. Look at the guys doing work here. Gage Savinka, Tremaine Ancrum getting it in. Pollard coming around. Carmen on the seal off right here. Big quick draw, right? Like a, a, like a baby deer <laughs> getting out over his skis. When he gets that bad boy going, he's a damn freaky athlete, man. I'm telling you. But he trips over his own feet pretty much. <laughs> but you can just see the concepts here. They're going to challenge you to defend all areas of the field. Both these teams will. This is such an epic matchup, man, because Joe Burrow can do uh, some of these same things. And he's hell on wheels, man, when he detaches from the pocket when he's throwing a pass. But they can really work Trevor Lawrence and um, these run situations with the designer QB run game and really make it hell's on wheels for you in the Offensive line does straight work. Four-fifths of the starters back from last year's national championship team, man. It's something that people need to recognize. All right, one more again right here on Jackson Carmen going against Chase Young. Quick set. Everybody's like, they keep doubling him, Cletus. They keep doubling triple team and Chase Young, Cletus. Uh, no, they just have quick draw T-Law dicing it up out there and Jackson Carmen putting in work there. That's what was happening. Great majority of the time, but just look at him work right here. Hands on the inside. I don't know. That might have been hands to the face right there. It gets real up in them trenches, baby. Did you see right there? Uh, Chase trying to trying to snatch the hands, right? Trying to snatch the hands away. He had to give it his all. Look, he ends up running himself out of the play. But sometimes you can just get rid of the ball quick, man. Got to get hands on mans on these type of teams. What is Chase doing right there? I think he's concussed. All right, now, if you've been following the channel this entire season, I've been a proponent right early on, and I've held steadfast to that. i even seen some of these guys work my proposed game plan to a T, like Georgia, right? Rushing three, no more than four, hands-on man, pressing across the board, keeping a spy in. But with that being said, man, you rush three or whatever like that, we can kind of see it work here, right? Rushing three. You got Kenneth Murray here as a spy. Offensive line really gets a chance to shine right here, right? And give this guy enough time. So then it just becomes up to your guys. Can they man up? Do they have enough guys to man up across the board? More times than not, that's going to be a negative. But you can see it, the amount of time you're going to give him to throw. Unless you have some kind of super uh, pass rusher, right? I'm not sure Clemson has that. Xavier Thomas is that in theory. Uh, they have the talent there. Even a guy like K.J. Henry, who I thought, to be honest with you, may be on the road to being a bust. But these guys are extremely talented in high school. They got to step up, right? Or I think Clemson will eat them alive with that. But you can just see the amount of time to be able to get the ball vertically down the field like that, even though this was an empty play. It was not complete. Um, but you can see how aggressive they will be, um, especially if you give them the time. All right, so let's get to some of these mishaps in the run game, right? I believe wholeheartedly LSU could replicate a lot of this stuff that Ohio State did on the ground. But as you notice, Ohio State had a little bit of success with that, right? Some explosive plays, then it went away. Now, you can blame that on J.K. Dobbins getting injured. Um, however, I think it's just a little bit better run fits later on. But if you check this quick zone out right here, right, all gaps covered. So you got Scalsey and Chad Smith 
both really approaching the line of scrimmage extremely heavy, right? Instead of probably taking a, sl a slower measured approach, they both tried to shoot the gaps here. We're talking about both uh, inside linebackers. So if you, if you see that, right, all gaps are covered, right? All gaps are covered. Perhaps you can say even with Tanner Muse coming down here, looking like he's going to be the pseudo de facto uh, edge contained player. But this leaves this two on one situation with possibly Justin Fields sliding out the back door going against Xavier Thomas right here. So he's damned if he do, damned if he doesn't. He would have to be some type of phenomenal quick twitch athlete to really be able to drive this home because he's in good position, right? So while he notices that J.K. Dobbins has the ball, I would think as great of an athlete as he is or great as a football player he is, sometimes I wondered about his just raw athleticism. Um, to be able to make a play like this, right? He needed to really sh have shot down on this. He didn't even get a hand on Dobbins, and I don't think Dobbins is the, the most – actually, his 0-60 to 60 is actually pretty good to me. So, But, man, he doesn't lay a hand on him. So then it's about the, the third level with Kayvon Wallace out in space, and that's a tough road to hoe, you know what I mean, when you got a guy running at you full speed like that. So, um, yeah, that was definitely made in the trenches. All right, this time they're running a split stretch. You got the H back cross formation block. You guys should know this by now. Stretch zone floor across the board with the lineman. So as always, you're gonna want to have great eye discipline on this one. And if you're a second level player, uh, you cannot be fooled, right? So my man Skalski right here takes the cheese for some odd reason by thinking the running back Luke Farrell, either he's leading to the play, maybe he thinks it's a counter play or something like that, but he kind of really makes this by following the H back if we see. All right, you can see the stretch going on right here. He's in good position, right? He's in good enough to position to where he could get out to this particular gap here and try to force it back inside to where someone like Tanner Muse can help. You actually have, uh, I think, Chad Smith out here. Right, lined up on the line of scrimmage. So this is a little bit different of a set, right? Four down linemen here. And he, look at this. He bites real hard on this, on the back door, worrying about this, thinking maybe it could be uh, Justin fills out the back door or something like this. So this allows for the stretch to really get home here and him to be able to kind of run the alley with it. Not going to have the foot speed right there to really catch J.K. Dobbins on some type of redirect. Uh, good plays out here by the Ohio State receivers as well, blocking. And then Dobbins just navigates the rest of that. Great hustle on this one right here by uh, Tanner Muse, though, to run him down. All right, here we see work a split zone out of the pistol. And here's the thing about this. LSU fans kill me. They come up on the channel all the time talking about some, oh, this and that can't be compared to LSU and that. Not one of them will say, Murph, why are you comparing Oklahoma's defense to Clemson's defense is not even remotely the same because Clemson's defense is way better. I guarantee you won't hear that. But here we go with this, right? So you can see LSU's ability to really work some of these combination blocks right here. Um, Big Damian Lewis, not sure what his status is, might be out or whatever like that, but they have plenty of offensive linemen uh, to work this run game stuff, and they're very good at it, man. Really creating these area blocks, right, with good angles and good athleticism. You even see backside cl cuts here from, like, an Austin Deckless. Dad Moss come in with the cross formation cut block right here. That's got to be the worst. I've been in those situations before. Those, those suck. But, um, man, you got a guy like Chris Curry running hard. Very good zone runners on LSU, right, that I know that they're salivating watching what Ohio State did in those couple of runs with J.K. Dobbins there. But. Um, it's about that offensive line, though. LSU has a really good run blocking offensive line. I'm still not totally sold on LSU's offensive line and pass pro against elite level defenses. I know that Joe Burrow's thrown the ball 60 million times. He's been sacked 29 times. But I think on some of these games and stunts like this, right, they get a little bit too complacent, especially when they're working out of motion and empty and the ball doesn't come out real fast. I think, look at this, three men getting caught up with one blocking one guy. Then you get someone to uncover, right? And Oklahoma's got a, a pretty decent pass rush, but not like it should have been um, with the fact that they were missing the best pass rusher. But uh, if you see right here, you can really muddy the waters if you really concentrate on having guys on the back, especially when they're going to more of these vertical routes. As you can see, stuff is going down the field, and um, the short stuff is already covered. So he has a way for that to uncover, and then you can see them starting to muddy the waters. And that's with three rushers. Right, three rushers. They're still able to get him down. Just wasn't a, enough room for Joe to pull his Houdini stuff. Juggler Joe, and he sacked. 
All right, check this out right here. A little bit more of a measured approach from Skalski and Chad Smith on this one right here. Skalski has to take on a block from an H-back, but Chad Smith does a good job of not just shooting the gap, kind of playing more like a, almost like a multi-gap approach, right, and then the being in the correct gap. It's a little bit headier defense. You can't, the Tyler Davis kid playing at the nose and the, and the shade one technique and everything like that, man, he may be the best defensive lineman on the field for either team. This kid is a freak. Conversely, this is where I think a guy like Tyler Shelvin for LSU can do work, right? Right here in the trenches against Simpson and Pollard, right? Really just trying to push and muddy the waters on some of these zone plays. Look at him, right? Eating up a double. Pollard's trying to combination up to the second level. Um, but he's absolutely eating Simpson for lunch. Pushes him back into the lap of Travis Etienne. And he stops to play while he's on the ground. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, man, it's it's a lot of layers to this. A lot of people just making it cut and dry, just thinking LSU was going to absolutely destroy Clemson. LSU could very well win this game, but Clemson can very well win this game as well. I think these two teams are very much evenly matched. Uh, people don't want to recognize that, right? But if you're talking about from a talent perspective, they're evenly matched. I don't care about competition play. To me, that just gives casual fans of a voice because they don't watch football. But if you watch football and you know who was on these teams, these are some loaded teams, right? Uh, just speaking from Clemson's perspective, because everybody obviously uh, favors LSU. Clemson is not going anywhere, man. <laughs> Clemson's not going anywhere over the next however many years, and in this year included. Man, it's still loaded. Uh, it still plays a fantastic brand of football, very disciplined, uh, has a lot of layers to it on both sides of the ball. Um, able to the ability to in game adjust as well, right? That's something that Clemson has been very good at over the last handful of years. So I just cannot absolutely wait for this game. So I'm just gonna keep trying to pump out some of this content before we. It's almost time though. It's almost time. So I'm not sure if I'm ready to get to any more, but we definitely wanted to give props to these boys in the trenches and y'all. Let me know who y'all think has the advantage in the trenches and don't talk to me about the people who they played and all this and that. I don't want to hear that shit that like come with something with some substance. If you do, do yourself a favor and go watch some games. If you don't, I can tell you about every single player on both of these teams and give you an in-depth scouting report. So that's how you actually achieve analysis. In my opinion, it's not doing something generic, just saying, saying, Oh, they didn't play. They didn't play the same schedule. No, this and that. that that's, that's not how sports works, right? You only got to play that team in front of you that day. So, all right. But with that being said, it's your boy, Murph, the underground King top billing sports. Thanks for supporting the content this week. Uh, it's been fun. Uh, getting that out there, man, answering 50,000 comments and all this and that it is what it is though. But with that being said, I am out. Peace. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing.